All right, well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Embracing Career Changes, which is part of our Get That Job webinar series here at the Champaign Public Library. My name is Jordan Neal, and I am the career librarian um, here at the library, so thank you all for joining us. Um, and we always like to share, you know, if you're interested in the latest library news and updates, please visit our website, champagne.org, or you could follow us on social media. You could email us at librarian at champagne.org, or you can chat with us just by visiting that homepage of our website. Uh, moving on to a couple of Zoom features available to you that might help during this webinar. There are some icons at the bottom of your Zoom screen, depending on your device. On the far left, you have the options that control your sound or your speaker. Uh, moving to the right and within the center of the window includes a chat and raised hand option. You can use these options to ask us any questions or share any comments. You can enter um, questions into the chat or raise your hand and we can unmute you so you could speak and ask your questions. Um, I'm sure our presenter will be happy to pause for any questions, but it might be helpful to wait till the end of the presentation. And I would like to remind everyone that our most of our webinars are recorded and posted to the library's YouTube channel. Uh, finally, I'd like to introduce our presenter, Kevin Martledge of Next Year Advisors. Um, we have Kevin's entire bio available on our website, but Kevin has returned to share his career insights. Um, and today we'll discuss how to change career careers while focusing on your professional pursuits. So thank you again for joining us, Kevin, and I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Jordan. I really appreciate it. And hopefully you can see my screen and okay, everything yes. okay. Yes. Um, so thank you for that great introduction. It's always a pleasure to, to be partnering with the Champaign Public Library on these webinars. So hope you find the uh, content to be very engaging and, and helpful. So uh, we'll just jump right into it as we start to talk about intentionally embracing career changes. So um, as Jordan said, my name is Kevin Martledge, and, and I, I own a company called Next Tier Advisors, where we really work with people to enhance performance, teamwork, and careers through intentional conversations and solutions. And, and it's very important, um, our approach, to kind of understand our approach to different things about, you know, we look at having awareness of your personal communication style is helpful in identifying leadership enhancements that can lead to more intentional and productive engagements with others. And so we really focus on, on you as an individual um, and how you go about um, interacting with other people or embracing something such as career change like we're going to talk about today. But by looking inward and kind of identifying some of those things that are innate um, traits about your personality, your skills, how you approach things, how you take in information, how you make decisions, all that kind of stuff, by helping you kind of understand those things, it'll help you then have a, a greater picture, so to speak, an understanding of, of what those uh, things may be and how you can intentionally embrace those things to, to um, progress in your career development or your career discovery or that change that you may be faced with. <clears throat> and so our goals for today's webinar are somewhat very straightforward. Um, we're gonna talk about why is change a good thing when it comes to your career and maybe the, the change that you're either faced with um, or you're contemplating on making based on where you are in that career journey. So, you know, whether you're a student that's, that's getting ready to jump into the workforce um, for that first time, or you're somebody that's a seasoned professional that's like, hey, I just need to make a, a career change. Or perhaps you're like I was a, a few years back where I was faced with my company that I was working with, um, had to make a change and they were moving their, their headquarters to another location. Um, and I had to make that tough career decision about, am I gonna go with them? and stay with that, or am I going to, to make a significant career change, um, which I actually ended up doing is why I'm here today. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But in all things, when change comes um, and you're faced with change, there's a lot of good things with that. We're gonna talk about how you can intentionally embrace those things. Um, and then we're gonna talk about how do you prepare for that career change? And, and what are some things you could be doing today um, to prepare for that change that you may be faced with, or even some things if you're not faced with a career change, um, some things you can be doing to, to help you if that change ever becomes something that you need to do. <clears throat> and then we're gonna talk about how you can navigate that change intentionally, which is gonna be the bulk of, of what we're, we're doing today. I have some, some tips and some approaches that you can take um, as suggestions to help you navigate through that change intentionally and, and successfully. And then talk about how do you get there? 
So you've decided what change it is that you're wanting to make, and then how are you going to to get there? What steps can you take um, to progress from where you are today to navigate through that change and to ultimately um, get to the other side of that change and continue to sustainably progress past that change and, and you know on with your career and so forth. <clears throat> so a way to do this, I, I'm a very visual person. And so when you think about change, you talk about, you know, on the left hand side over here, your focus. So when you're focused with the change, you can either look at it as a threat or you can look at it as an opportunity. Um, and so we're going to talk about today is, is instead of looking at, at some of the changes that you may be faced with as a threat, um, I want to really push you to be changing your, your mindset and to be looking at it that, OK, this may not be a change that I'm really um, excited about. Um, but let's look at the opportunities with that. So I'm going to force you uh, or encourage you to be looking up in this area when it comes to change. And then the other way we can look at it is your mindset. So one way to do that, a very finite mindset, is to look at just what's happening today and how do I just get over this one hurdle and just and get on with my life um, instead of a very infinite mindset, which is very long term, um, forward thinking. Um, and, and having, you know, looking past maybe the hurdle that you're, you're faced with in this change and looking to what those, those opportunities are and, and the long-term things. And finite and infinite mindset comes to me uh, from one of the, uh, a great author and public speaker and motivational speaker, Simon Sinek. Um, he has a, a great book out there called The Infinite Game. I highly encourage you to take a look at it. There's all kinds of webinars and, and videos and stuff on, on YouTube as well that you can look up. Um, but Simon Sinek is just somebody I really uh, admire in terms of how he goes about thinking about that infinite mindset, especially when it comes to change um, and especially when it comes to maybe strategically planning out your career past that change. And so, you know, the goal is and, and how I approach this is if you can have that infinite mindset and focus on the opportunities, your productivity and your, your ability to advance past this change is going to significantly increase. Where if you're if you're more down here in the you know short term, hey, I got to win just this situation, and I'm thinking of this as a threat, you're not going to be productive in terms of being able to surpass those things um, and that change. And so we're going to really encourage you to continue to, to increase your ability to move past that change by thinking infinitely and focusing on those opportunities. <clears throat> and so as you're looking at that, we're also going to talk a little bit about your current state. So we all operate in, you know, you've heard the word paradigm, I'm sure. We all operate in a current state that we're in right now. And so those current states are just the activities that we do, the resources we have available, the background we might have, what makes us unique, our skills and our ability. That's what I'm going to be calling our current state as we're going through this webinar and talking <clears throat> about how we can then move to our future state, which is that that uh, time frame that we're moved past this change, we successfully navigated through it intentionally, and we're now in a future state, and we're really realizing maybe all the opportunities um, that that were made and presented to us because of this change and what we were faced with and the change that we've decided to do. How are we going to get from our current state to our future state? And so we're going to be talking about all of those things um, in a way of using an intentional mindset and being opportunity focused is what we're going to call it. It's going to help you have a more engaging career that provide opportunities and advancement that, that maybe you weren't aware of as you were first faced <clears throat> with this, uh, this change or this idea of, hey, I need to make a career change in what I'm doing. <clears throat> so that's a little background uh, in terms of the goals for today's webinar and, and what we're going to be focusing on and, and kind of just give you um, kind of level set of where we're going to be starting from as we're having this conversation. So let's start out with why is change good? That was, whoops, that was the first thing that we talked about. <clears throat> and so in my mind, change is very good. If you're thinking about it infinitely, um, it allows for innovation. You know, if we don't change things up every once in a while, we're just going to keep doing the same thing we've always been doing, getting the same results that we've always had. So change is a good thing in that it allows for innovation. It also provides opportunity to upgrade, enhance, and maybe amend the situation. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking very finitely about a change that you're faced with, um, it's just like, my gosh, I'm so comfortable in what I'm doing. <clears throat> I just don't want to go through this change. I just have to get past it. 
Um, but if I'm thinking more infinitely, I could say, okay, I've been presented with this change. What's my opportunity by na navigating through this change to maybe upgrade my situation or enhance my, my work-life balance or to amend the situation that maybe I was in? So maybe there's some things that you don't really like about your current state that, hey, this is an opportunity to change those things. Or maybe there's some things that you do like and there's a way to maybe amend it to enhance or upgrade those things. <clears throat> So change also allows us to get out of our comfort zone. And we all like to be in our comfort zone. We get very comfortable in there. That's why they call it a comfort zone. Um, but when you're faced with change, if you really infinitely look past that change and the opportunities, it'll get you out of your comfort zone. But I think nine times out of 10, in my experience, <clears throat> you get out of that comfort zone and then it starts to open your eyes to other possibilities. Um, and so we're gonna really encourage you to get, get out of that comfort zone a little bit too. And it also provides us unique opportunity to advance. <clears throat> so I mentioned to you a little bit earlier that I was faced with my, what I used to call my dream job. I absolutely loved what I was doing. Um, and the, the, the ownership or the management of that, that company, that organization decided to move their, their headquarters from Champaign out of state um, down south to another state. <clears throat> and so it provided a unique opportunity for me once I got over the shock of, oh my gosh, I have to make this change. How can I get past this turtle? It provided me a unique opportunity to advance myself. And so I, I was able to finally do something I've wanted to do for the last 25, 30 years is create my own company and my consulting firm next to advisors. And so I can go out and help those other people um, to achieve their goals and, and so forth. So without being faced with that change, um, and that disruption, so to speak, of my career and my lifestyle, um, I would never have taken the opportunity to advance myself personally and to do something that I've always wanted to do um, and do that. So <clears throat> I think there's some really good things that come from change, and those are just uh, a few of the things that um, I feel like uh, why change is very good. So once you're faced with this change, <clears throat> you then have to kind of identify the opportunity. So I've talked a little bit about that. And the first thing you have to do when you look at change or you're embracing change is you have to remove the emotion um, out of it. So whether it's you're faced with something you weren't expecting and it's kind of got you disrupted and you're upset about it, you have to remove that emotion and look at the facts and to look at what you're actually be, being presented with to help you identify that opportunity. <clears throat> so the more that emotion comes into play, the more blinded you could get in terms of what those opportunities might be. So I really encourage people to remove that emotion when you're faced with change, especially if it's something that you weren't expecting. Um, you also have to remove that emotion if you're faced with something that you are expecting and you're very excited about. Um, you don't wanna get into that thing where the grass is always greener on the other side. And so you wanna remove that emotion from it. So you're really focusing on the facts and you say, wow, this is a great opportunity that I'm faced with. Let me take that emotion, that excitement out of it a little bit, check down a little bit and really focus on what this opportunity is. You can certainly still be excited about it. I'm not saying that, but really making sure that you're taking that emotion out of it. So you're thinking clearly and looking at the facts to make that right intentional decision that you have going forward. <clears throat> you have to identify the positive and negatives of making the change. Um, this is the oldest kind of trick in the book. When you're faced with change, make that list. What are the positives? What are the negatives for this change? Um, that'll help you ultimately identify those opportunities down the road. <clears throat> you have to focus on the positives for sure, but also understand the negatives as you're making that change and you're intentionally um, navigating through whatever that change is. <clears throat> you have to determine the best path forward and you have to determine the best outcome, develop action plans and move forward. So sometimes change can be very easy to say, okay, this is how I'm gonna get over it. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do those things great. But sometimes, especially as you're looking at um, embracing a career change, you might need to put down some, some specific action plans about how you're going to do that, especially if you have some time to plan for this change. Uh, maybe you know that in a year this is going to happen. So that was the situation I was in with my last company. Um, they gave us plenty of heads up that this was happening. Uh, we certainly had to make a decision about where we were going but it allowed me to kind of step back and develop some action plans and to investigate some things and to methodically move towards that change and ultimately pass that change because I had enough time to plan for it. <clears throat> Even if you don't have enough time to plan for it, you still might need to put those steps in place to make sure you're not, not forgetting anything or missing anything. 
Um, so planning is a huge thing as you're starting to intentionally embrace some of the career changes that you might be faced with or you might be thinking about. <clears throat> so that's a little bit more of a background and, and kind of why change is good. So let's talk about how you can prepare for a career change. Um, and, you know, I talked a little bit about it. So how do you embrace career change? I think you have to really understand yourself, your goals, your values, and your skills. Um, if you don't understand personally what is, you know, innately important to you in terms of, you know, what your goals are, what your values are, what skills you may bring to the table, it's going to be very difficult for you to intentionally embrace <clears throat> that career change and to understand how you get from point A, your current state, to point B, your future state. You need to continue to focus on the opportunity, but certainly be flex flexible. You know, one thing with change is that change is going to cause more change. <laughs> and so there's going to be some things that you may have the best laid plan in place, which I'm going to give you some tips here on how to do that. Um, but you have to be flexible because it may not always work out um, the way you want it to be. And so that flexibility is going to be super important as you embrace this career change and really identify what those next steps are. And you always have to be looking forward, but certainly never forget what got you here. Um, no matter where you are, whether you're just starting out in your career, or whether you've been in your career forever and you're, you're making that change or you're looking to get a new job or even advance within your company, what got you to the point you are today is super important. And we're going to talk about that as we talk about transferable skills here in just a minute. <clears throat> but it's super important for you to never forget what got you here because you got here for a reason. Um, and there are some certainly some, some very important things throughout your career and things that you've accomplished and achieved that are important as you're um, looking at making that change. <clears throat> Oops, sorry here. So understanding yourself first, intentionally embracing career change begins with understanding the following about yourself. Um, and like you said, like I said, you need to understand you before becoming truly intentional about your career. So if I were to ask yourself, um, you know, these four questions, these are called the four W's. I use this a lot with my coaching clients. Um, but if I was to say, who are you? So if you had to say, who am I? How would you, how would you explain that to yourself? Um, or how would you explain that to somebody that was asking you? What do I like to do? And which environments allow me to be the most productive? So if you were to sit down and take some time, um, it could be five, 10 minutes, an hour, however long you think. But I always encourage people to answer those four questions about themselves. Because what that's going to do is going to help provide you a narrative and a story and kind of some context around some of the changes that you may be looking at. So if you're a student looking for that, that first job, you know, who am I? You may be, uh, hey, I've got a bachelor's degree in kinesiology like I am, uh, like I have. Or you may say, hey, I, you know, I really <clears throat> um, like to um, some things that I value or I like to have a very good work-life balance. Um, I certainly like to make uh, money so I can provide for myself and my family, um, but have a job that allows me to advance. So those are things that I value. What do I like to do? I love doing things like this. You know, I love teaching people. I love showing people um, how to look at things a little bit differently. Um, I love jumping into uh, maybe an organization and helping them understand what are some of the things that they're, they're leaving on the table? <clears throat> and which environments allow me to be most productive? So for me, it, it's one where I can be very interactive with people, but also have that opportunity to sit back and reflect and to, to help develop maybe some things that we need to work on as an organization. And I love being in that, that leadership type environment <clears throat> where I can lead a group of individuals towards common goals and so forth. So those are some examples for me, um, and we, we won't open it up today for you to share your examples. Um, on the webinar, <clears throat> but I really encourage you to look at those four career W's and be able to articulate that um, and at least have it written down to help guide you as you're making some of these changes and some of these things we're going to be talking about. <clears throat> and then how do you use this in information to embrace the change intentionally? Uh, like I said, that's really good to just provide you um, that, that context and kind of guardrails for you to, to be navigating through that change intentionally. Um, so when change arises, I suggest you complete the following. Take a deep breath. What is positive about the situation? So start to identify that. What does this change truly mean? 
um, for you and your situation. Uh, remain focused on the positive, keep the emotion out of it, develop a plan and stay committed to your plan, but be flexible. So we talked about that a little bit earlier, um, but these are some, some kind of mental things <laughs> that you can go through as you're faced with that change or you decide, hey, I need to make a change in my career. Take that deep breath is the first key thing and just say, okay, let's get this emotion out of it and let's start focusing on the positive about this and, and how we're going to get there. <clears throat> Um, always be looking forward, but never forget what got you there. Um, so we talked a little bit about this earlier, but your past is important to understand to tell your story. And so whether you um, are developing your resume or updating your resume or writing your cover letter or you're in that interview, um, I'm going to give you some tips here in a few minutes on how you can really go through and start to understand and tell your story. It's not easy for a lot of people, myself included, to talk about yourself, especially if you've been in a career or a job where you've been there, say, the last 10 to 15 years, uh, or even shorter sometimes, but you're very comfortable. It's maybe difficult for you to jump into that interview situation <clears throat> and start to talk about all the great things that you've done um, in your past job, because that's what got you there. And so we've got some ideas here in a few slides that will help you uh, be able to do that. Use your past experience to help identify potential opportunities. So really look back when you're faced with that change and say, what do I like about my current job and how can I continue to do those things but maybe in a different organization or in a different setting or a different uh, group of individuals I'm gonna be working with or a, a promotion or whatever it might be. What things about my current job do I not like? And I wanna make sure that in my new job, when I get past this change, I'm not doing those things or involved with those things anymore because I just don't find them engaging. And you may have to you know, be flexible, again, like we talked about, because you may not be able to get 100% of the things you really like and 0% uh, and of the things you don't like, but you have to be able to identify what those are so you can be looking at that to intentionally move you to that next, that next position or that next um, opportunity. Challenge yourself to think more infinitely, and like I said, get out of your comfort zone are all important things. <clears throat> So let's talk a little bit about the navigating this change intentionally and some, some things that you can do and some processes and, and thought, thoughts that you can go through um, to be doing some of these things. <clears throat> so you have to start with the why. Um, regardless of where you are in your career journey, if you're wanting to make a career change, you must understand the why. So whether you're down here at the beginning where it's your very first job and you're just starting out on this career journey, or you're, you're working down your career already, or you're already in your career and you wanna do something different, or you wanna find that new job or get that new promotion or get that next job um, you know, moving up in your organization. You all have career goals that you're working towards as you're going <clears throat> and advancing throughout your career. And everybody on the call is somewhere along this track um, and when you're faced with change, it's probably because you either wanna do something different or you have to do something different or you're looking for that new job. And the guardrails on this track are your transferable skills and your experience. So what got you there? Um, and then what skills you have that you can then take to that new job or to doing something different? We're gonna talk about here in just a second. Um, so why do you wanna make a career change? You know, maybe you're unhappy with the current situation. Maybe you feel you could provide more of an impact doing something else. Maybe you just need a change. Maybe you're forced change you to change your company or organization. So, you know, really being able to identify, and that's where you take that deep breath when you're facing that change and you say, hey, I'm just not happy with this current situation. So let me take that emotion out and start to identify some things that I can do to navigate past this change and to intentionally get past this. <clears throat> or maybe, you know, you're in that position where you feel you can just provide more of an impact doing something else, um, or maybe you just need that change. And so <clears throat> that all goes into being able to identify the why um, you're faced with this change and how you're going to get past it. Um, what is your goal for making the change? So what does that end goal look like? So after you've identified the why, hey, I'm just not happy with what I'm currently doing, I need a change. Okay, well, what's gonna make you happy? You know, what's going to keep you engaged in your career? What are the things that you want to achieve in your career? Um, that, that would help you get past this change. So what's that end goal look like? <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with sitting down and saying, you know, once a year even, 
even if you're not wanting to make a change, is to, you know, what do I want to be doing this time next year? Is it the same thing? Great. Uh, let's keep doing it. How am I going to make sure I'm still doing those same things? Or if it's, hey, you know, I need to make that change and now's the time to be doing it. Well, let's look at what that end goal looks like and then start working back. <clears throat> you can also then talk about what current skills do you have that can, can take you to that end, goal, end game and what additional skills we need to achieve your goal. And then ultimately, what is your plan, <clears throat> right? So you've identified the why. Now you're looking at what the end goal looks like and what are the resources you have that are going to help you take you to that future state and that, that future goal. <clears throat> so the plan, you've identified now that, hey, I got to make a change. I identified what our, our end goal is going to be. And so now let's identify the plan. And this is where we're going to spend a majority of the, the call today or the webinar today kind of going over some ways to do this. So the first thing we're going to talk about <clears throat> is called, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is how to identify your transferable skills, um, which these are the things that you bring with you no matter what you're doing. It's, it's your past. It's the things that you've developed as a person that you could take from one job and you're going to bring to the table at the next job. Uh, we're going to talk about how you complete a personal SWOT analysis, so your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, certainly need to update your resume, how you align your social media um, platforms to align with that resume and what you're doing. Reach out to your network, begin the process, and certainly, again, there's that word again, be flexible as you're, you're developing your plan. <clears throat> so how do you get there? How are you going to develop this plan? Um, it's very important. Um, to identify your transferable skills that you possess as a candidate for a job or as you look for that next job. And so transferable skills are, are super important. I spend a lot of time with my, my coaching clients talking about how do you identify what your transferable skills really are. <clears throat> These are the skills that might set you apart from others that are also looking for that, that same job. Um, they help you identify potential jobs that are aligned with your skills. So instead of you know, hey, I'm, I'm very emotional. I need to get that new job. I'm just looking at, you know, Monster. I'm looking at LinkedIn. I'm looking at Indeed. What jobs are out there? Hey, that sounds good. Let's go look at it. Let's take a more methodical, intentional approach. And let's first identify what are the skills I can bring to the table? And then what jobs will allow me to use those skills? Because I know when I get in that interview, I can talk very well about my skills that I could do and how I've used those skills. And I also know that if I'm in a job where I'm using those skills, I'll be very engaged because I'm going to be very comfortable with what I'm doing because <clears throat> I've done it numerous times or I bring that skill to the table. And so it's also going to be very um, encouraging for that person that may be hiring you because the learning curve is going to be very small um, in, in a lot of different areas. <clears throat> There's not going to be a lot of uh, a long onboarding time and so forth. Um, how do you identify potential next steps in your career based on your skills and interests? Um, and then it allows you to continue to understand, identify you regarding your career and overall goals. So again, it goes back to understanding you personally, so you can then identify that next job or navigate through that change. <clears throat> and on the other side, be using something that you know you're very good at. You have a lot of value in doing. You can bring a lot of value to the table. And, it, and personally for you, you know you'll be engaged <clears throat> in what that next career might be. So how do you identify your transferable skills? And there's, I'm sure, a hundred different ways <laughs> that you could go about doing this. But the easiest one is just to make a traditional list and rank them. So if you were to sit down and say, what am I good at doing? I'm going to list all those things out. What do I do on a regular basis at my current job? List all those things out. Why do you feel you're good at these things? So you now have this list. And next to each one, you're going to be saying, hey, this is why I think um, I'm good at this, um, and here's why. So here's a sentence or two about each one. Um, and then very importantly, you know, what are some tangible results that I can talk about that prove that I have this skill um, that I do? So for instance, it may be something that, that you really feel comfortable at public speaking. Um, and so you're able to say, okay, public speaking is something I'm really good at, or speaking in front of a group of individuals is something I'm really good at. Um, and I do that, you know, my current job I may have, I, I do that, you know, at least once a week, 
maybe, you know, six times a quarter, uh, maybe four times a year, I'm, I'm, I'm able to do that. I present things or whatever. Um, and, you know, I always get very good feedback from people when I, when I present in front of people or whatever, I'm just making that up, but that would be something that you could say, okay, here's the things I'm really good at my, my skills. Here's how often, or, or, you know, why I feel I'm good with that. And then here's some tangible results that I could do. <clears throat> That's a very easy way. You could do that. As soon as this calls over, you could sit down and start making that list, um, today, um, and those things we'll talk about here in a second, once you have that list, what you can do with it, but it's a very easy and simple process that, and you might, I guarantee you're going to find it very, um, enlightening as you really sit down and start to think about your career, or if you're a student, what's gotten you to this point, <clears throat> um, if you're making that change that we're talking about, maybe you're seasoned professional wanting to make that career change. Um, another way, which is the, the preferred way that I like to do it, is a colleague and, and partner and actually a friend of mine uh, who owns Wayfinders Consulting over in Indianapolis uses a method called um, your success stories. <clears throat> and success stories are very interest, is a very interesting way to identify um, your transferable skills. Um, and it'll help you align your skills and interests and provides an intentional career path if you're able to identify these success stories and it also as you're going through this process will help you to start to put that narrative together as you're getting into those job interviews as you're developing that um, that cover letter <clears throat> as you're updating your resume to make sure that all these pieces align um, and it's going to help you start talking about um, you know if you go back up here to the top why do you feel that you're good at these things we're going to have some specific success stories that are going to show you some of those things <clears throat> And so um, the way you approach the success stories, and it's a, it's a somewhat involved process. And, you know, I really encourage whether you have me, you know, help you walk through this or a trusted advisor, a friend, a family member, whatever. Um, but write down examples of 10 success stories that include things that you were passionate about and you excelled at. Basically things you like and were very good at doing. And so, you know, if you're having trouble coming up with those, I always encourage people to start as far back as you can, you can remember. You know, for me, it was like when I was maybe around five or six years old, I remember something specific I did, um, you know, that, that I talked about. And then kind of move in five or six year increments past that as you get to the present day and be thinking about things that you felt like you were very passionate or you felt like you were very good at and write those things down. <clears throat> Um, and if you can only come up with eight, you only come up with eight. If you come up with 15, you come up with 15. But the goal is to try to get to these 10 success stories. Um, they, the stories must include both, so the things that you're passionate and excelled at. <clears throat> However, it does not mean you're an expert and perfect, but you had some positive ability towards doing whatever it was um, that, that you feel like um, was included in the success story. <clears throat> and these stories can include things like volunteering, maybe athletics, if you're part of an athletic team, maybe school project, um, jobs you had, work projects, projects around the home, starting something new, something you've created, a personal goal, et cetera. So there's really no um, right or wrong way of identifying your 10 success stories, but they're just things that, that mean something to you, you're very passionate about and you excelled about, you excelled at doing. <clears throat> and then you only need to write a sentence or two about each describing the success you had and how you illustrated what you were passionate about and excelled at. So it, it's a very enlightening process. Uh, step one is to start to identify those, write a sentence or two about each um, and come up with your 10 success stories. And I, I guarantee as you're going through it, you're gonna find it a very interesting and kind of rewarding process to go through. <clears throat> and you're gonna start identifying trends as you go through this, of, of maybe skills that you had or things that you're passionate about and excelled at as you're doing that. So then step two is after you, your success story is written out, begin, begin to identify common skills that you use to achieve that success. So you're gonna have these 10 stories and maybe you're, you're gonna start to easily see that, hey, you know what? <clears throat> My communication skills were always great. You know, I was the leader or you know what? I was great at, at having somebody tell me something and I just went and knocked it out of the park and, and, and did it to the best of my ability. Or, you know what, I was going through that. It was always about, all my stories are about me serving others and how I was out there able to help other people achieve something and be a part of the team. So I really enjoyed doing that. 
And you're going to start to see that there's going to be some trends as you're going through this. You're going to say, gosh, my entire life, I've always done this, whether I, I knew it or not. It was just something I was always really good at. <clears throat> so you'll start to see these trends and you'll be identify some of these skills. And those identified skills can be used in a variety of ways as you begin your career, continue career, start and make your career, uh, changing your career, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. So once you have your top 10, you know, success stories, I encourage you to kind of come up with your top three. So try to take those success stories and, and, and boil it down to maybe your top three. You're going to have then some of your identified on the left, and I've just made these up. These are some typical ones that, that people have come up with in, in some of the conversations I've had. Um, but you're going to chart your skills down the left-hand side. So maybe even made that list from your first example. Um, you, you've then come up with your success stories. <clears throat> and as you're looking at your success stories, you're going to just go in and you're going to put a check mark next to each one of those skills that you identified and when you used it in that success story. So you may find out that, you know, if I look at my top three success stories, leadership is a common skill and something that was very common in all three of my success stories. Communication was very common. You know, creative listening was two of my success stories. I could talk about that. <clears throat> Critical thinking, my technology skills. Hey, you know, all my success stories involve me being very proficient in Microsoft Office. Um, I was very good at putting together Excel sheets, or I was very good at whether it was a, a, a job uh, task that I had or my personal life, I still used, you know, Excel to kind of plan out how I was going to achieve that. <clears throat> um, so all those things, you kind of chart those out. And then you total them up, both across and up and down. <clears throat> and so what you're going to be doing then is you can see that, you know, leadership, communication are your top two transferable skills. And you know what, as you get into that, that job interview or you're talking about your, your cover letter or your resume, I really need to focus on my success story one and two because that's the two stories that have the specifics regarding how I've used some of these skills <clears throat> in my career to this point in time or my life to this point in time. And so it's a really interesting way to kind of look at what's gotten you to where you are today, what you've been successful and passionate about, and then how you identify some of the skills that you can then start to talk about in your resume, cover letters, and so forth. <clears throat> so it's a pretty cool little process to go through. Um, the other thing that you can do with this <clears throat> is, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm having trouble talking today, um, is you can start to prioritize and talk about your development in these things. So say you're faced with a career change um, and you know that it's coming a year from now or, hey, it's a change you want to be making in the next six to, to 18 months. You can then start to talk about, you know, from a development standpoint, my technology skills, the things at the bottom <clears throat> are the things that I maybe I feel like I'm, I'm less proficient in. And as I go up the list, are, are things that I, I feel more and more comfortable with in terms of my ability to do these things. And then I'm gonna start identifying what are the specifics that I could start to talk about with those things. And so for leadership, you know, maybe you led a team of 15 individuals towards a common, common goal. So you're gonna start anytime in an interview or as your cover letter, you're gonna, somebody starts talking about your leadership, you're gonna immediately go to that story about the time you led 15 individuals towards a common goal and be able to talk about that. Teamwork, maybe you collaborate with three days. So you're gonna immediately go to that conversation and that story that you have and be talking about how you, how you did that and collaborate with three different departments during that to, to illustrate your teamwork. <clears throat> so you can kind of go through this. So the more specific you can get on the right, the more helpful it's going to be as you're starting to get into that situation where you may be trying to get that next job, trying to make that career change and so forth. What this is also going to do is that, say you know you need to make a change, but you're not quite sure what that change needs to be, you just know you need to do something different. You can then start to look at what are the things that made you successful in these categories and how do I go about finding jobs that will allow me to do those same things? 
So if I know that, you know, I was great at leading a team of 15 individuals towards a common goal, what jobs can I look at to narrow my search that will put me in a leadership position where I can work for an organization that's going to allow me to do those things? Because I know I'm going to be very good at it because I have a proven track record I could do it. It's one of my success stories. I can talk intelligently about it and, 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 you know, directly about it in a job interview. I could probably write about it very easily in my cover letter to illustrate my abilities to do those things. And so what jobs are out there that allow me to do those things? And we'll talk about here in a few slides, but even as you're looking at job descriptions, you can start to then look for some of these key terms in the job description that say, hey, it talks about leadership talks about teamwork, it talks about creativity, talks about ability to execute, talks about being adaptable. And you could start to then almost grade job descriptions based on how well they align with your identified skills. And once you can get to that point, you're gonna start intentionally embracing that job change because you're not, you're taking the emotion out of it, you're looking at the facts, and then you're identifying um, what's going to align um, perfectly with your abilities and those jobs that you can do that. <clears throat> so this process identifies important information for you to use in a variety of different ways. And so um, just a little bit of insight on how you can use, identify your transferable skills and then use that information to intentionally design that next step, think infinitely past that change um, and take some of that emotion out of it. <clears throat> um, so details. As you're identifying these things that made you successful in these categories, I want you to really be specific about what it was you did. Document metrics if you can, develop your narrative around each one and align your skills with the job description we talked about earlier. So the more specific you can get as you're starting to talk about <clears throat> why you were successful using these skills, the better off it's going to be for you in the long run, right? So you're starting to write a narrative and an outline of your skills and your ability that you can then pull from as you're getting into job interviews, or you can pull from to intentionally look at maybe some opportunities down the road. <clears throat> and so the more specific you can be, the more metrics you can document, um, the, you know, the narrative around each one is going to help you um, do those things. So if you're looking at, you know, led a team of 15 individuals towards a common goal, what was that goal? How did you know um, you achieve that goal. Um, what were the different, you know, departments or individuals that you worked with? Don't ever give names or anything like that, but, you know, it may be you had to work with, you know, um, an, an analyst from the ID, IT department and a director from another department <clears throat> and uh, one of my team members um, to achieve this goal of, you know, we had to implement a project or something like that. So be as specific as you possibly can as you're going through that. So once you've kind of identified those skills um, and you've identified the, the specifics around it, you can then start to look at what I call a personal SWOT analysis. And so I do a lot of strategic planning with organizations and even with individuals. Um, and you always talk about your SWOT analysis. So if you're looking at, hey, we have a goal we want to achieve. Well, in order to achieve that, we need to identify our personal strengths our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our threats. So we can have a good analysis of this situation and what we're able to bring to the table. So as you're looking at your personal strengths, your personal strengths may be your transferable skills, your background, you have a proven track record, your similar job responsibilities, maybe other items you may identify that could fall into your personal strengths categories. If you look at your personal weaknesses or opportunities, <clears throat> well, actually just weaknesses, Maybe, you know, you have all these strengths over here, but you need some additional training in some areas, or there's a lack of certain skills. So I've identified a job that I want to pursue, and I have all these things over here that I could bring to the table, but I also identify that I'm going to need some more training in this area, or I'm going to need some more experience in, the, in providing this skill or, or doing this skill. Maybe I'm from a different industry. So when I went to my last job, you know, I was in corporate America with FedEx and Xerox, and, and I managed teams of individuals in different printing facilities around the country. And I went to the nonprofit world <laughs> where it was totally different, totally different industry. And so I had to be very aware of that 
of that uh, intentionally aware of that hey i'm coming i'm an i'm an outsider so to speak and that i don't have a lot of experience in the industry specifically um, but i have a lot of business knowledge and, and and strengths over here that i could bring to the table right and so being able to identify that is that was one of my weaknesses um, and maybe there's some required certifications or licenses that you may need or maybe you have a certain degree and now you're wanting to make a change and go a different direction in your career that's going to require you to go back to school. So it's very important to know your strengths and your weaknesses so you can talk about those as you're getting into that job interview or be able to identify those things. <clears throat> you also have opportunities and your threats. So the opportunity for me in some situations, maybe it's a better environment, it's more money, better work-life balance, there's upper mobility, more opportunity. And maybe some of the threats are there's work-life balance changes. I'm very comfortable in what I'm doing now, but it's going to be a different work schedule. So I have to be able to identify that. There's going to be a new environment. It is a different industry. So while that's a weakness, that could be a threat too. And so I need to be very aware of that. Um, and maybe there's a learning curve or, you know, in my situation, I had to move to a different state in order to stay with that organization. So it's a very good way of critically looking at your situation and identifying those strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So you can then take those personal strengths and weaknesses, comparing that with the job description of maybe that job you're looking at. Your threats and opportunities, you can then prioritize those. So if you go back and you look at, you know, these opportunities and threats, <clears throat> you know, the, these opportunities far outweigh these threats. So I may have to, um, you know, have a little meet in the middle or, um, you know, understand that in order to, get past this and look at the long-term goals uh, i'm gonna have to you know just um you know really dig deep and learn that new industry and it's going to be a change and it's going to be something that's not going to be fun to do necessarily but for the greater good i'm going to have to do some of these things and so i'm going to have to go through and prioritize those things as i'm looking at these change and understand looking internally again what's most important to me as i'm navigating through those and so forth <clears throat> So as you're looking at your job description, you know, are your strengths aligned with the job requirements? Do you have a background in the lines with that job description? Are your weaknesses aligned with the job requirements? Is the environment going to be engaging and supportive? And what gaps are there between the job requirements and your skills? So those are some questions that you can ask yourself as you're starting to look at these strengths and weaknesses and you've identified that new job or that potential job you wanna go with, you can then start to look at these things <clears throat> to help you prepare for that job interview or to prepare and write that cover letter in a certain way to address those things, to really highlight your strengths, <clears throat> to be very self-aware of your weaknesses, but also how you're going to be, you know, overcoming those things as well. <clears throat> Again, we talked about prioritizing review opportunity versus threat and, you know, asking yourself, whoops, sorry, is the opportunity worth the threat and are the threats worth the opportunity? <laughs> and so those are just very tough questions to answer sometimes. But if you don't know what those opportunities and threats are and what your strengths and weaknesses are, you're never gonna be able to identify those things. And by identifying those things, you're going to be able to intentionally embrace those things in a way to help you, you know, overcome those um, um, very effectively and to identify those great opportunities and what they are. Um, and then you go back and you kind of, after you've identified these things and you've identified that job, you're going to go back and review your four W's, you know, so, hey, is this job, you've gone through the job interview, maybe they made you an offer. Um, you're going back through and doing that gut check. Is it going to allow me to be who I really am? Is it going to allow me to, you know, still believe in my values that I have? Am I going to be doing things I'm going to like to do? Is it going to be an environment that allows me to be most productive? And so you can always kind of come back to those four W's as you're intentionally embracing this career change to make sure that you as an individual are gonna still be productive um, and engaged in that new opportunity. <clears throat> and then how do you use that information to embrace that change intentionally? So what about that next step in my career? So we talk about how you can look at those four career W's <clears throat> and you can always go back and ask yourself, Say you're, you're faced with that change that, you know, I just need to make that next step in my career. You can go back and then I always encourage people, whether you're happy with what you're doing um, or you've made that change and now you're wanting to assess 
um, hey, was this a good change for me? Am I achieving the things that I've always wanted to do? You can go back and ask yourself, how have I grown professionally and personally since I made that change? Um, or if you're going into that change, you can say, how, how is this going to allow me to grow professionally and personally? And so you can kind of go back to that career W, whether you're going into it or you've made that change to assess if it's a great thing. If it's allowed you to grow professionally or personally, great. It's a great change. You're achieving some of those goals. Same thing with the values. Have my professional and personal values remain the same or have they changed? So, you know, as I'm going through and, and making this decision to make this change, um, maybe when I got into that job, it was doing all these things for me, but now some things have changed. And so I need to be addressing that change. Or I made the change and now a year later, I'm going back and um, making sure that my values are the same. <clears throat> and if not, we may need to look at making a change again and so forth. What about my job do I still enjoy and what would I change? So it's always good to be asking yourself that periodically, especially after you've made a change to make sure that, um, you know, you're still being 100% engaged in, in doing the things that you like to do. Does the current work environment still support me being productive? <clears throat> and what newly developed skills do I have? And can I use those skills in a new position? And so those are some questions you could ask yourself to kind of dive into those four career W's a little bit further in your skills, whether you're looking to make that change or you've made the change and you're wanting to assess the, if you've achieved some of those things. <clears throat> and so I can't stress enough how valuable I find these four career W's, especially if you spend that time at the beginning, really identifying how you describe yourself, what you value, what you enjoy doing, and what environments make you the most productive. You can then use that information off and on before change, after change, as you're navigating through change to make sure that those guardrails and those four career W's are continuing to help you <clears throat> move in the right direction down your career path um, as you're intentionally designing these things. <clears throat> so deciding to change, again, we kind of talked about that. You can look at your skills, your career Ws, your SWOT analysis, and all those things you know, combined together are going to help you intentionally career plan or intentionally design your career no matter where you are in that in that that process, no matter if you're just starting out as a student, or you're you're that seasoned professional that's wanting to make that change, or you're like a student that I a client I kind of talked with the other day that's a, a PhD student that they're getting their PhD and they're like, gosh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. What what can I do else that I could still use my PhD and all this hard work I've done, but but may make an impact in another industry now. And so we're having some conversations about that. And so you start to identify those skills and your W's and your SWOT analysis to kind of identify what some of those things are. <clears throat> so that's a lot of information. We got a few minutes left. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how do you get there and how do you do all these things? <clears throat> and so um, there's a, a, a form that, that Jordan will send out to everybody that attended the webinar afterwards. Um, it's a next year career awareness worksheet. <clears throat> and so this will uh, allow you to identify your four career W's and, and I encourage you to physically write them down on here. Um, I encourage you to write down what your top five skills are. Um, I encourage you to write down maybe what are some occupations I could pursue that allow me to use those skills or you could say, okay, what are some jobs that I could pursue that allow me to use my skills, that allow me to use my values, my four career Ws, and so forth? And then really hold yourself accountable to next steps. And, you know, three steps doesn't seem like that much, but if you could specifically say, okay, I'm faced with a change. I know where I want to try to get to. What are the three steps I'm going to do to, to make those, to, to achieve those? And hold yourself accountable to them. And this is meant just as, as, a, as a template. You can adjust it and do whatever you want. But I really, you know, encourage you to document this and keep it front and center as you're going through this change. It's going to help you take that emotion out and get back to some of the specifics and the, and the work that you've done to identify yourself and what, what's important to you um, and so forth. <clears throat> Write out what we call SMART goals. So specific, measurable, accountable, relevant, and time-bound. Um, bring in a mentor or a trusted advisor. You know, navigating through change is, is can be a very lonely, <laughs> a lonely task. 
And if you have somebody that you trust that can advise you just to bounce ideas off of or to hold you accountable to these goals that you're doing, I highly encourage that. You know, whether it's me as a, as a career consultant or a friend or family member, or maybe it's a coworker or a, a student that you're, you're in class with, a, a colleague, find somebody that can help hold you accountable that you can trust. Um, um, to have these conversations with. <clears throat> so being specific about your goals, you know, who needs to be included? When do you want to do this? Why is this a goal? Um, quantify the results as best you can. So how am I going to know when I achieve this goal? Or how am I going to, to know when I've met this goal? Um, start each goal with an action verb. Um, how, you know, make sure it's relevant to what you're doing. So don't just set a goal if it's not going to help you intentionally achieve um, that ultimate goal that you're trying to reach and to navigate through that change. <clears throat> and then the most important part, in my opinion, is make it time bound. You know, don't just set a goal, but set a date, um, set milestones between now and that date to help you continue to move, move through the progression of navigating through this change and achieving those goals um, for your career. Another great resource, uh, I've talked about this in a lot of my, my webinars, um, especially if you're looking for that next job, is, is ONET, um, online.org. It's run by the U.S. Department of Labor. It's got more information than you could ever want about any job you could probably think of. And it also allows you to search for jobs based on skills. So if you identify a leadership as a skill, um, or it allows you to, to look for jobs based on what we call hauling codes. And so I have some other uh, webinars I've done about how do you align your personal interests with career, uh, in planning out your career. And so going through some of that process, um, you can identify jobs that allow you to, to use some of your personal interests and so forth. So a lot of great information on here. Um, uh, I encourage you to take a look at, it, especially as you're trying to, to align your values, your goals, your, your skills and so forth with that next job. Um, or making that next career change. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and then the last thing I'll offer is because you attended the webinar today, um, I, I like to offer everybody a free 30 minute follow up call if you're interested. Certainly no obligation whatsoever, um, just a way for us to connect after the call. Um, I'd be more than happy to, to have a quick you know, Zoom call with you or a phone call with you just to kind of learn your story to see if there's anything else I can can help you with. Uh, Jordan will send the link out to everybody after the call, um, but please feel free to take advantage of that. I, I'd love to get to know you a little bit more um, and understand where you're at in your career um, journey. And if there's anything else I can help answer regarding the content today or any other resources I connect you with, um, it's very important to me to continue to build that network uh, with individuals like yourself, um, just as having another resource, if nothing else. Um, so I'd love to hear your story and talk to you about where you're at, and if there's anything else I can maybe help you with in terms of, you know, intentionally embracing that career change, um, because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a huge undertaking, regardless of the change that you're faced with. Uh, I'd be more than happy to help you with that if you, if you think that would be helpful. <clears throat> and with that, I will open it up for questions. We've got a couple minutes left. You can put something in the chat um, if you'd like, or if we don't have any questions, we can end. And uh, I appreciate everybody's time today. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. We always appreciate your, your time. And like <laughs> thank Kevin, you. And like Kevin said, um, you can type your, enter your questions into the chat or you could raise your hand and we can unmute you. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, and like Kevin said, I will be sure to send out that information that he mentioned during the webinar. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, of course, you can reach out to me. I have my contact information here on the screen. Um, you can email me here at the library. We're also offering um, those book librarian appointments where we can work with you on um, if you need help with technology, your resumes. We are hosting practice interviews. Um, please give me a call or email me. Um, our next webinar, well, first of all, thank you all for joining us. It's good to see you this morning. Um, our next career webinar will be Tech Tips for Your Job Search. Our technology librarian, Susan Winkler, will join me for a discussion on using tech tools to stay organized, to stay aware, and just up to date during your 
uh, your professional development or during your job search. And that will be on Tuesday, November 9th at 10 a.m. Uh, so we hope you'll consider joining us for that one. I don't know about you, Kevin, but November just snuck up on me. <laughs> And Absolutely. I can't believe the year's almost over. Honestly, yes. So. <laughs> um, same way. Yeah, we hope you'll consider attending more webinars and workshops. I have our uh, November career webinars listed here, but we do have a lot more webinars related to technology, our business series, writers workshops, crafty adults. We have a new legal series coming up, so please visit our events calendar, champagne.org slash events for more information. We do also have a lot of our recordings, as I mentioned, on our YouTube channel. Um, and to receive updates about the li latest library news, you could subscribe to our newsletter by visiting champagne.org slash news. And if you miss my contact information, you could easily just email librarian at champagne.org and it will get to me one way or the other. Um, like I said, we're still offering those book librarian appointments, whether you want to come into the library or you want to visit with us virtually, uh, whatever is easier for you. I think that's all that we have. Unless anybody, I don't see any further questions in the chat here. Turn on my video. Well, thank you, Kevin, for joining us. Thank you all for you. visiting with us this morning. I think we'll go ahead and end the webinar. I hope everyone enjoys their morning. Take care. Thank you. Take bye -bye. care. Bye.